Lisa. Hi everyone, Clara here. Uh, while I was in Grenoble, a bit before the men's short program, Stéphane Lambiel, double world champion, uh, Olympic silver medalist in 2006, coach of great renown, uh, was kind enough to sit down with me for a brief chat about the changes to the IJS judging system, his coaching philosophy, and his work as a choreographer. Here it is. I'm here with Stéphane Lambiel. <laughs> Thank you for talking to us. Thank you for so, having me. Um, I, I guess mainly what I want to concentrate on is your experience as a coach. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to start with, and I'm sorry, I'm sure everyone's been asking you about this over the past four years, <laughs> but um, the quad revolution, you as a skater who was part of the first wave to really bring in quads consistently, <laughs> what do you think is the main driver behind the explosion of quads recently? Is it just the incentives of the judging system? Is it equipment? Is it jump technique? What do you think's really driven that? I think it's it's a little bit of everything. It's a, it's a lot of work. It's determination. It's the system that wants to to push the skaters to land quads. It's it's precision. It's everyone is putting so much effort into into the quad jumps. So of course uh, we see a lot more quads nowadays than than 20 years ago. Um, I mean, a quad is a quad, and it's it's amazing to see the development in the technique, technical aspect of uh, figure skating. Um, I'm very impressed with uh, with a lot of things. I'm a little bit disappointed to see that quads are taking so much time from mm. from the the beauty and the aesthetic of figure skating. So I think we are still in the process to find the right balance between putting quads in a program but not sacrificing the, the rest of the program. Sure. So you're on the side that thinks that these rule changes are a step in the right direction then, I guess? We are. I, I think we are going in one direction, and, and this is not fixed. So oh, I, sure. I'm, I'm pretty optimistic that we will find the right balance and, and we are going towards something that, that will hopefully get better with time. We need mm. time. This new judging system is still new. Yes. <laughs> and uh, there are changes every season almost, so we, we need to be patient, I guess, and we need to, to, to make, make the programs and the, the, the development with the rules, but at the same time we have to keep um, skating alive, and skating uh, is a very emotional sport, and we have to keep sure. those emotions uh, in, in the programs, in mm. the performance, I think. It's, it's still there, and... I still see great performances, but I, I also see a lot of programs where I feel it's it's only a, a combination of uh, elements. And, yeah. And yeah, that's that's something that we should, with the rules, try to, to avoid. Sure. And that's possibly going to get even more difficult, especially in the free with 30 seconds off, right? Yeah. I mean, you have less time and you have to, to do more quads. and You have to. You don't have to, but... But the strategy, yeah, yeah, the strategy is, is that way. I mean, it's in any case. I think what is important is to to sell what you have the best you can. Sure. That's I think with the plus five and the minus five, that's really what the judges want is to to see that when you master something, that that you sell it the best way, and, and that's where you're gonna get the best GOEs and. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. Sure. Has it changed the way you choreograph, losing those 30 seconds on the free? Not really. I always start with music, and music gives me an image, an atmosphere, and then from this atmosphere, I create um, a story where I really want to build images. What I want is that the skater feels comfortable with the, the choice of music. So usually I, I try to have the skater put his feeling in the choice mm. and, and really make it very personal so the, the process of choreographing becomes natural and, and we can create together with the skater the atmosphere that the skater is comfortable with and the movement that he's also comfortable with but taking, taking some edges and some, some risks to make it look original mm -hmm. and at the same time beautiful and harmonious and yeah I, I think the process of choreographing remains the same with or without those 30 seconds it's of course a challenge to 
to place the elements. It's it's a big challenge. Yeah. But once once the music is uh, chosen and uh, the skeleton is kind of uh, made with the elements, then we can really let go and and the imagination mm -hmm. comes pretty quickly when when you have the the right image towards uh, sure. the, the the program that you want to create. So you choreographed the free for Gabby and Guillaume this season. I helped. I I didn't choreograph the whole program mm -hmm. i helped them in the beginning of the process creating the program we were uh working on on content mm -hmm. choreographic content so they could use it for the free and then they were with their coaches they were putting all those pieces together and and it was really interesting because what i just discussed was uh, uh the process of choosing the music yeah. and and that took some time until we we both agreed on, okay, that's the music that we will pick. It's the story of a relationship between a man and a woman. And it's a, a very usual mm -hmm. story, but I think there is no one better than Gabi and Guillaume to, to explain it with their movement, with their fluidity, but also with their precision. And we're with their, uh, how can I say, dramaturgy yeah. that they have when they skate. You can, you can really feel how they feel and that's yeah. how we we connect with them so so it was really interesting to to go through the the the, the choice uh and then creating mm -hmm. the atmosphere understanding how we will create the atmosphere so they can express themselves the best way they can and put some some long touch uh, <laughs> in and there so we worked on that content and and i'm really excited and i look forward to see the final product because since we worked together in Ju july i i haven't been able i was in contact with their coaches and but I haven't been able to see the final product so it's going to be very awesome, interesting yeah. yes to to see it on saturday did you all come into it with like a desire to make like make it stylistically a bit different from what they'd done before or I think their style I mean of course I was trying to feed them with some mm. new vocabulary on the ice and and trying to give them uh, another way of doing the things they do great but at the same time Gabi and Guillaume they have their own style they have their own way of expressing themselves and they by asking me to help them, they they are not scared to take any risks. So I think that's that's exactly as a, as an artist, what you want to do is is develop yourself, taking risks, but yeah. at the same time uh, remain who you are and be exactly what you are and what mm -hmm. you want to to show. And and they are so clear when they express themselves. It's so easy to understand what they want to to express mm -hmm. and I, I don't want to change anything of that because that's who they are and that's sure. why we love them <laughs> of the few programs that you haven't choreographed this season mm. <laughs> has any one of them stuck out to you in particular choreographically what have you enjoyed i i really 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 enjoy uh satoko miyahara i think she is a very refined skater mm. she what i love about her is that she's not only executing but she's really feeling the music yeah. and that's something that is quite rare nowadays because like we said before we have so much to focus on during the program that that sometimes the music is kind of next yeah. to the program and when I see Satoko I can feel that she's connecting with the music connecting with the audience connecting with herself and and yeah, that's something that I really enjoy uh, while I watch her. And when we choreograph together, she she's always very receptive. It, it's the way she she applies and the way she she puts the movement in action uh, shows me that she she's a really fantastic artist and a fantastic skater. Um, then of course Dennis is is my student. I choreographed his free program with a. Uh, Japanese contemporary dancer, mm -hmm. uh, Kenta Kojiri, and we we worked on that last samurai program um, when we were in Latvia, in Dennis' hometown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dennis was really excited to skate to uh, a Japanese uh, theme uh, program. He loves Japan, and it was also nice. When, when he's interested in something, he puts so much heart into the work, mm -hmm. so it was fantastic to do this choreography with him and with Kenta, and we were putting a lot of images in that program. It's it's always great to see how, how big his imagination is. 
Yeah, you can tell he's really feeling it when he's skating. Exactly. He's, he's there. And full of creativity. He's a very creative uh, boy, and you just have to open the door of creativity, and he just throw throw things at you that that you cannot even <laughs> imagine. It's it's amazing. That's awesome. I mean, since we're discussing your coaching now, de facto, there's a, a saying, possibly sexist, I don't know, that women become their mothers. Do coaches become their own coaches? Is that something you see happening? Do you see any of your, your past coaches in the way you manage your students now? Is that something you, you seek or seek to avoid? I mean, of course, Peter is a model and he's been, he's 76 now and he's still coaching and I... I I have to say that the passion that he has, he has transmitted to to myself, mm. and and uh, the same way Salome, my my choreographer mm. since I'm ten, she has uh, transmitted so much to me. Not only the passion, but the, yeah, the whole concept of their philosophy of figure skating. And, and it's a lifestyle. It takes a long time until you understand it, but uh, but I, I think uh, I'm following their steps for sure. I'm following what they what they do, what the way they are. I'm doing it in my special way, <laughs> I have to say. But for sure, for sure I can feel, feel both of them, both of them in my daily um, working. Did, did you come into coaching with an idea of the kind of coach that you wanted to be? Or? I, was, I was at the beginning because Peter is a very patient and not very... Um, it doesn't feel like he pushes you. And mm. that's something I'm... I'm I'm still working on it because I, I really understand that the initiative, the initiative, initiative, initiative yeah. to to do something has to come from the skater, mm. and in order to have the skater being responsible for what he does, you need to push them, but without them feeling it. So Peter was was a master in that. He was never, or maybe he didn't need to push me because I was I was myself. Uh, a hard worker. Yeah, I mean, sure. And, uh, Probably a bit of both. Yeah, a little bit of both. So that's something that I'm taking from Peter. The, I'm trying to learn that way of, of pushing without pushing. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have to, because you've got skaters from all over the world in Chopin, do you have to ad adapt the way you, you try and of course. manage that, depending each, on where they come from? I think each person is different, and not even because of the national oh, sure. and the culture, but but just each person has their own system, their own fears, their own uh, qualities, their own uh, life, their own surroundings. Sure. So, I mean, you, you have to deal with, with a person and it's not, you don't want that person to become exactly the same as the other. You just want that person to develop their way, their, their character, their potential. And that's something that I, I, I'm very convinced that I don't want to make this student look exactly like, like another, sure. but I want this student to be the way he wants to be and that one. And, and I'm going to talk about um, the plan with them. I'm going to um, understand and try to, to be receptive with how they want to look on the ice, how they want, what they want to perceive. I, I can sense when, when a movement, for example, is not comfortable, then and we will discuss it, and then I can, I can pull it out. I I, don't, I can talk about it, and mm. and yeah, something needs to be personal when you skate, and and I will not try to put my way of doing things on them, but sure. I want them to to absorb what they want to absorb from me, my experience mm. and from my knowledge to be able to express themselves. So when you think about, I don't know, the L'Ambiel brand of coaching or the Chambéry brand of coaching, what sets you apart? Do you think it's it's that or the pushing without pushing or, uh, or is it something different? Is, it's, it's, or is it too complicated? It's, no, it's not complicated, <laughs> but I think it's pushing without pushing and it's for sure precision, but still personal. It, it, it's, pers it's a precision within personal working ethic. Okay, yeah, I can see that, the sort of... There must be some like emotional boundaries and, and management yeah, stuff. The skater comes on the ice with his own person, with his own personality, mm. and I'm expecting what I expect as a coach is the attitude, the, yeah. atti the, the positive attitude towards work. It's to be a figure skater takes a lot of energy. It's a hard life. It's it's becoming more and more. It always been, but a lot of pressure, 
to to go up out there and to get a judgment from from the crowd, from the judges, and from the technical panel, and it, and from the coaches, and and from themselves also. So it, it's a lot of judgment, and you need to have wide shoulders to 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 bear it. But uh, but once you have the right attitude, you're not afraid of facing. Mm. Any, any of the judgment. And as a coach, what do you find most... So I, I remember an interview with Brian Orser where mm-hmm. he was saying one of his challenges coming into coaching from skating was how to be in the kiss and cry, for example, when a skater had had a disappointing skate, like mm-hmm. how not to project disappointment out, how to be sort of like neutral comforting. Have you struggled with that? What, what have you found most challenging about the transition? It's, I mean, <laughs> myself, I, I'm a very emotional person, mm. and, uh, and it's really hard to not show my disappointment. I think, <laughs> <laughs> but still, I, I, I think when you're in the kiss and cry, it's it's right after the performance. Of course, if you're disappointed, you need to behave, but you don't need to hide the disappointment. Mm. It's not the right moment to do um, a debrief. Sure, sure. It's, it's definitely not the right moment. So you just. Take your marks, and then once once you digest your your performance, then you can debrief with the skater. But but I think uh, it's a it's important to behave and to mm. respect and to respect your work, to respect that some that sometimes it's not working the way you want, and sometimes it will work way better than you expected, and that's something you're aware when you go to compete. It's it's something you're aware, and it's something that that you have to 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 deal the pressure the the stress is part of the job i i tell my skaters don't try to get the stress away yeah do it do do with with the stress it's it's your friend it's your it's what will bring the performance up there with the stress you mm. will succeed not without you need the edge yeah yeah it's 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 really i i feel a lot of people try to not be stressed but mm. The stress is normal. Like all skaters are stressed. Sure. All skaters are nervous. All skaters want to do their best. So it's the one that will use it the best way. Yeah, that's the that's the last thing I wanted to ask you about actually, because you worked with Mihai Koleda mm-hmm. uh, this season. We love him. He's amazing. He's got such beautiful skating skills. But he really seems to suffer with nerves, right? Like I've seen him. In- mm-hmm three competitions this season two of them he just wasn't able to perform mm-hmm. the way he wanted mm-hmm. to so I was wondering how as a coach how do you think about that psychological element do you work with sports psychologists for your skaters or what do you think I, I do work with the psychologist I was I was seeing someone back when I was competing and I think the trust is really important I, th- I think the key word for me is trust and sometimes for example Mikhail I'm not too worried because he's a strong strong guy and not only physically, but I feel mentally. He, okay. if he lets go, he he will be stronger. Okay. Now he wants. He can do everything. Yeah. He really can. And I've seen him in practice. He's so strong. He's so capable. He, he, but he wants to control everything. And and in competition, you just have to do your job. Don't mm. try to control because you're you're late on what you have to do. If you try to or try to see yourself doing things, just do them. Yeah. yeah. Don't try to control it everything put the energy in action instead of uh, that's that's my feeling but i yeah. think it's something that that you you should probably discuss with the skater as a coach and and if you're not willing to do that then to to find someone that that can can do that approach of making it happen yeah. so it's coach's first step and then if you i think so i think if if the trust between the skater and the coach is is strong enough to face that and to discuss together is is possible then that's totally feasible. Good to know. I hope. <laughs> I hope he manages to let go this he, season. Yeah, I want I, to I see come and clean. Once he once he, he will let go, it will it will feel very easy. Mm. But right now, because he's not letting go, it feels really complex. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel. Yeah, I can only imagine. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, it's it just feels mm. like a mountain. And once he will do it, mm. he will be like, oh my god, that's actually not that difficult. So to be on that edge is always as a skater. It's it's very frustrating because I'm sure he's ready to yeah. to, to skate a, a great performance, and he will just need the right let go to to do it. Okay, <laughs> cool. We'll pray. So, last question: We're gonna see um, uh, we're gonna see Matilda and Dennis. Yes. Skate. Anything in particular we should look out for in each of their performances? To enjoy their performances. They are my students. I I, I love them. Uh, so much and uh, I wish them a 
great performance and I hope the, the, everyone will enjoy their streaming, their energy, and I hope they can connect connect with, with everyone in Konami. I've not seen Matilda live yet, but Dennis always does. So. <laughs> Cool. Thank Please you enjoy. so much for your Thank time. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. So there you have it. We have a couple more interviews coming in the near future, so keep an eye out for those. And if you want more figure skating coverage, head on over to episode 19, where you'll find Danny, Kat, and Tilda recapping their highlights from the Internationale de France competition. Thanks, everyone. See you soon.